Now, we have talked about the immigrants who came through Angel Island, how it wasn't always an experience your ancestors want to talk about, and that can be a problem for every family, elders who are simply not used to talking about the past. With me right now is Gail Wong, an author and retired educator, as well as being very active in the Korean community. And still with us is Grant Din, the Community Relations Director for Angel Island Immigration Station. Thank you again both for being here. Grant, first of all, give us sort of the big picture for people who have, we've talked a little bit about it in terms of how many people came through Angel Island and the type of people that came through. Sure. Angel Island was opened for between 1910 and 1940. And during that time, about one million people came to the U.S. or traveled back out through Angel Island. They came from 80 countries. It's probably best known for the Chinese who left poetry and maybe the other Asian groups, but there are a lot of, um, there are Russians, there were Jews escaping the Holocaust, and there are other groups we just heard um, about Armenians who came through Angel Island. And, but among the Asian groups, Chinese, Japanese, um, Korean, Filipinos were the largest groups. And as we've emphasized before, there's a lot of extensive records that people can mine by going through Angel Island, yes, right? Yes, the National Archives. That's the, right. Yeah. Gail, you had the experience uh, not only in terms of looking at your own family, but also mm -hmm. talking to other families about right. their experiences. Right. First talk about your own family in terms okay. of what you Well, I was tremendously through. influenced by the civil rights movement. So then I started questioning why, who, who's our family? Where did they come from? Why did they come? What were their expectations? And my parents didn't know the answer. I certainly didn't learn about this when I was going to high school and college. So then I figured, let me start with my grandfather. Mm -hmm. So I started by going and just interviewing him and uncovered this rich history that not even my parents knew about. And he told me this incredible story about how he had escaped from Korea. This was when the Japanese government took over Korea and annexed Korea in 1910. And they had to escape. They put on, uh, they went across the Yalu River into China, put on Chinese clothes and pretended to be Chinese. And when they were stopped by the Japanese military uh, police, they, he pretended, oh, I'm from Bokun province in the northern China. And then they made their way down to Siberia, to uh, Shanghai mm -hmm. and came over on the SS Mongolia. And um, I have a clip that shows him his feelings about arriving in the U.S. and how he felt when he arrived. Very good. Let's listen to that. When I left Korea, I was like a free man. Oh. Yeah. I was like a bird. Wow. Oh, because, you know, uh, more everything free. Yeah. Liberty I have. Oh. In Korea, just like a jail, I am a prisoner, just like a prisoner. Mm. And so I, I like, maybe was glad to left Korea. Yeah. You know, he has a way of saying things almost sounds poetic. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it was amazing just to interview and hear this because I didn't know anything about it. He was part of an underground organization and a lot of his friends were captured and killed. So when he arrived, you could see how he felt. And he had ex expectations of wanting to become a teacher, wanting to continue his schooling, but of course he couldn't find any work. He ended up planting tomatoes, ended up as a dishwasher, a houseboy, but he was eventually able to find some space in San Francisco where he opened up a cleaning and tailoring shop. And um, he had to pretend like he was half Russian in order to, because of the anti-Asian sentiment, in order to get some space. I, I guess what's uh, valuable here is not only that you learn more about your ancestors mm -hmm. and your grandfather's mm -hmm. individual experience, but mm -hmm. also, too, how it fits into the overall family picture. Definitely, right? yes. And, well, you could see he then expressed, af after being here for maybe, say, a few months, how difficult it was. And this next segment shows how his hopes and dreams were soon kind of deflated because of some of the problems that he faced. Very interesting. Okay, let's listen to that. But after a while, I feel this is criminal. The American people does not want the Oriental people for the job. They don't like the Oriental people. That's <laughs> You know, you can really get caught up in the drama. What do you want to make sure people should talk to about their relatives, especially if they're reluctant? What's some of the key information you want to make sure you talk to them I about? I think just learning about the history. What I got that was so powerful was just his feelings that he conveyed, the emotion. I had never known him in, in that sense. Mm -hmm. And he gave me a lot of courage and um, 
a lot of, uh, he said, imparted the Korean spirit to me and keeping on the Korean culture. So I got a lot of uh, strength from him to carry on some of the work that he's been doing. Tracing your family roots really yes. works on a lot of different yes. levels, huh? Mm -hmm. Both of you, thank you very much for being here. Thank you. Fascinating. Thanks. Well, the Angel Island Immigration Station Foundation and Angel Island State Park will be presenting a Family History and Reunion Day on July 11th at Angel Island State Park. And you can get more information at AIISF.org. And we hope you have learned a lot about finding your family roots. We'll have more on our Asian Pacific America website. Coming up, our cultural performance, a Bay Area Filipino folk dance group is next here, live in our studio, so don't miss it. <laughs>